Hey there, it's uh, Christian from Seven Gaming Network and I'm here at my computer uh, to tell you about a deck that I've been working on um, in Star Wars Destiny. Brilliant uh, new game that's come out. Now, uh, I want to tell you about this deck because, um, well, I've had a, a bit of a runaway amount of success with it. Really quite a surprise. Um, I put together the deck because uh, I, love, I love Sith. Uh, I'm a dark side uh, um, fan and uh, I put these uh, two together with Kylo, these two Night Sisters, looking at her ability thinking well that does look very strong uh, and after playing 12-13 games uh, I've currently only lost one game um, so uh, I'm feeling like this is this is, seems like a very good deck another reason I wanted to share this deck with you is we've only got one legendary in it um, uh, well two copies of and that's Force Choke so this is a this is a deck that is not particularly expensive for you to uh, put together because it's only got those two legendaries in, and uh, and it's been really really strong. So, and you could absolutely leave this out. Um, there are other things you could put in in place, uh, and the the deck will still be uh, absolutely super competitive. Uh, and of course, putting something else in, you might have a little a new ones you'll add to it. But let's get stuck into these characters and talking about uh, the characters and how to play the deck and the tactics and why we've got some of these cards in here. Now, these Night Sisters, this ability, after playing a bunch of games with her now, is off the hook. This is a control deck. The general idea is what we want to do is stop our opponent doing any damage to us, doing anything nasty to us, whether that's damage or discard or whatever it is. We don't want them doing that to us. We want to control them until the turn finishes and then essentially we'll hit them for a bunch of damage. Now, what feels super strong about these Night Sisters is that they're, it's their action. It's just an action to re-roll a die. Now, that's obviously an opponent's die is a possibility. Yes, we can re-roll our own um, and improve some of our own uh, consistency, our odds. But ultimately, we're going to use this when an opponent rolls a really nice bunch of dice uh, or even rolls that, you know, that one... Uh, range damage that they need and all the rest are a bunch of uh, modded range damage we can use that reroll to get rid of that uh, that damage so it, you, we can use these night sisters over and over again because it's uh, take one damage how can we use it over, over and over again well they've got seven hit points and we've got two of them so even just raw numbers we could say that if they don't take any other damage that's 14 re-rolls that we've got throughout the game now i just want to point out that i think this really um is is super powerful in this game because normally any ways of manipulating uh, another person's dice um are normally through well well your own dice and you've got to use those up or it's through cards um and we do have some cards that will do that but the fact that we can do this from an action and keep doing it is ridiculous. We can't keep doing it here, you say. They've only got seven hit points. That's going to run out. We can't. Okay, so let's shield them up, shall we? If we shield these girls up, well, then they're going to survive a lot longer. And what we can actually do is be really cheeky by putting something like uh, Hidden in Shadows on them. If attached characters, no shields. Exhaust is upgrade to give it one shield. What we are actually able to do there um, is, uh, you know, if we got uh, immobilize or we, we roll a shield, we've got a shield, or you even perhaps start with, you know, a shield each on the Night Sisters from the initial roll of the game. You don't take the battlefield. What happens is you can then use your action on a turn, kill that shield, uh, hidden in shadows, uh, and use that again. They're going to get another shield. That's another shield available for you to then do their action again. Um, there are plenty of ways of us applying shields and then mitigating uh, those um, those damages that, that from their action that's going on to them. So I cannot underestimate, I cannot um, uh, under overemphasize to you how important it is uh, this ability. This is the main way you're going to control your opponent and whether they can get any damage out in their rounds. Now, of course, what happens is once we've sort of neutered their attacks through using Immobilize and Force Choke, which are two brilliant um, dice. Uh, here we can, look, turn their cards, uh, turn their dice to blank sides, turn their dice to blank sides. That allows us to um, stop their damage, 
stop any incoming damage, combine that with these actions, uh, and we've got a very strong way of controlling um, whether they can do any damage to us in a turn. And then at the end of the turn, we've still got two damage sides on these Night Sisters um, to be able to dish out some beats. Let's talk about Kylo. Again, I think he is really underrated. Um, 13 points for two dice. Uh, you might say, well, they're rubbish dice. I disagree. Let's have a look at them. We have got effectively on Kylo three damage sides. Now that's strong. Yes, we have to pay for one of them. I understand that. And yes, the other one is a bit spiky. Uh, but I would say that most of the cards that your opponent has in hand are either zero, one or two. Uh, look, on average, that special is going to do one damage. Possibly even more on average. Simply because there are going to be those times when you hit the mind probe or the... Um, you know the one with the force or you hit the ATST and you do stupid amounts of damage so I really don't think we should be underestimating how good Kylo actually is um, and if you also factor in that uh, the other side is a shield well hey we know how good shields are in this deck for keeping these Night Sisters able to just keep manipulating and controlling those opponents dice so Kylo works brilliantly with these girls so if this is how we're going to uh, control the game and stop our opponent doing any damage to us, we've got a couple of other little options as well which start to be um, a little more utility. This force throw is a bit of a mix of both dice removal and dishing out some damage, dishing out some beats, because of course that die that we remove of our opponents, we're going to throw that uh, damage. You can use your own, remember, I'll just point that out. Um, now, Force Training is actually really handy in this deck. Uh, it's, it's one of the ones you could absolutely change it up, but the versatility that we see on its special is, I think, a really handy thing to have in this deck. Dealing the, sh um, the damage or the resource uh, or getting a shield, fantastic. Shields, again, great with the Night Sisters. Many of the events that we're going to play in this deck have, um, they cost one resource. So gaining one off your special is really nice, and of course dealing damage we're happy with. But if you look at the sides that it is, um, these two damages, again, we're, we're happy with those because we are doing both ranged, and of course we're doing uh, melee damage with Kylo, so we're quite happy with those sides, and the focus is really great. If we can focus um, Kylo to some damage sides or focus him to a special, um, we've got some really powerful uh, little combos that can be going off when we're taking advantage of focus because this is the damage side of uh, our upgrades so Sith Alquan if you don't know it is a super powerful card I love this card uh, it's, a, it's a rare it's not a legendary um, it costs zero which is probably where it's really strong and um, very quickly if you don't know how it works you play out the Sith Holocron, you roll it, you hopefully get a special which you're going to get one in three times um, or you can focus or you can use the girls to try and make it get it get it onto its special there's lots of ways in this deck that we can get the special to roll on that Sith Holocron as soon as you do um, you switch that Holocron for a blue upgrade in your hand, which hopefully is going to be Mind Probe, because uh, when you do, it costs nothing to then play it. So essentially, you are getting to play that Mind Probe, which costs four for free. Um, now, once you've done that, whoever you play this onto, whether it ends up being on one of the girls or on Kylo, use this early in the turn, roll this character early in the turn. I would say it's the, the first thing you do in a turn. If you've got Mind Probe out, because if you roll that special, the pressure that you pile onto your opponent, who's got five cards in hand and is going to get hit for five damage from that mind probe, uh, it creates it creates panic. It really does, because uh, they have to deal with it. And even if the best they can do, which most of the time is going to be play one card, they're going to take four damage. The pressure created by um, a holocron deck mind probe is huge. Even just getting a mind probe out is always going to be super strong. Now with the lightsaber, uh, yes you can attach it to Kylo, it's going to work very well with Kylo, naturally enough. Um, it's got great sides, uh, we love the plus with uh, Kylo, that's fine, and we also love um, that uh, shield as well. And the two unblockable damage, always a pleasure, we've got um, a little bit of uh, unblockable damage in, in this deck. Uh, what I would say, um, as with all redeploy uh, cards, 
try and see who is your opponent really focusing on. And you don't mind playing this later. Like, if they look like they're about to die, that's that's really not a problem. You can still stick that lightsaber on as long as you get to activate and roll and, and try and um, resolve those, uh, resolve its uh, that character's dice. It's a really worthy play. Um, but these, uh, but the lightsaber is a really good way to actually draw your attention. Most people, when they play against this deck, go for Kylo. Um, most people tend to focus on Kylo first. You stick a lightsaber onto a Night Sister when she's also got an immobilize, or the other one's got you know an immobilize or a force choke on, and suddenly it will make them go, oh, oh crumbs! I don't know which one to go for now because not only have I got an immobilizing Night Sister who's controlling me and causing me real issues, she's now dishing out damage to me. That's really really annoying. Um, so it creates these really difficult problems for your opponent to overcome. Okay, so we have got uh, some really nice upgrades there for doing our damage um, and for our control. So let's have a look at um, the uh, cards that we're going to use for uh, well, for control first of all. So we've got some three pretty good staples here. You can see them, that these three all cost one across the top here. We've got use the force, isolation and feel your anger. Bear in mind that we're going to be causing our opponent to re-roll their dice quite a lot. We're from our Night Sisters. Um, if they roll to blanks, we can really pounce on it with a Feel Your Anger. And it can be super frustrating to deal with uh, when Feel Your Anger hits, if, especially if it manages to remove, remove two. Um, these are fairly straightforward. Don't need to talk through those. And just remember that you can use this on your own as well as theirs. Um, but most of the time we're going to be using it on theirs to stop them being able to force damage through. Deflect, great card. Spotted blue character to remove a die showing range damage and deal half of that damage rendered up to a character. It's fantastic. We're able to remove a die of theirs. Um, how many, uh, I don't know about you, but the majority of decks that I'm playing against seem to be using range damage. Um, there is quite a lot of harm around, certainly online. Um, there seems to be um, the sort of Phasma um, um, Stormtrooper decks getting uh, quite popular. There's an Akbar Trooper deck that's doing well. Um, uh, Django is a real thing. Um, there are lots of uh, very competitive builds that are, that are using range damage. So, and again, in this game, if, if you don't get to use it, it's reroll fodder. Now then, this is the damage. These are scary in this deck no mercy is resolve one of your dice showing damage i love it it's either melee or it's ranged we've got both so we don't mind increasing its value by one for each card you just discarded guys it's all blue cards in this deck so no mercy can hit like an absolute train um we're looking at uh well three of our characters all three of our characters have the two um, side on their dice um, uh, but the one really isn't an issue when you are then uh, chucking out um, uh, another four cards off it to add to make it a five damage alpha strike you could also of course get the damage from the lightsaber as well um, there is the mind probe uh, again we don't we're not quite so keen on those because we're paying one resource for that and then we're paying one res uh, two resources for our no mercy um but this is this is finisher this is five six damage coming out of nowhere uh, and it's very very scary uh, especially if you can back it up with the mind probe and then the power of the force we have got lots of upgrades in this deck and we could very easily be at especially with sith holocrons costing zero we can be at four five six upgrades out on our team we play a power of the force well just read it we can see that these two uh, cards are so strong for finishing uh, finishing characters off this is super spike damage uh, and is really quite terrifying uh, and these last two are here um, this is Sometimes if a character is really shielding up, it can be a real pain. Uh, and so Intimidate just makes life a lot easier in terms of setting up for that kill. Um, especially if we're about to uh, 
we want to get a No Mercy or Power of the Force off and uh, and take a character, you know, from having six health and three shields on, suddenly, oh my goodness, it's all over. Um, and Enrage, again, is really handy just to get that one resource, which, of course, many of our cards that we're playing are costing, uh, are costing one. So uh, another really handy one to have. In terms of the general flow of how to play the deck, um, the whole idea really is super control, super, super control, using your resources to control their characters, um, using uh, getting shields onto the girls and using their reroll, so that essentially you're sort of stalling to the end of each turn all the time. They're desperately trying to get their damage out. You're doing everything you can to just neuter their damage. Uh, this is the sort of early game setup. Uh, so you need to be, um, I would say, mulliganing for Sith Holocron and Immobilize in your starting hand, um, or Force Choke. Um, immobilize ideally, because you want some shields. Uh, I also would be quite happy with them starting with the battlefield and me getting uh, those two shields, which I'll stick one on each Night Sister. Um, so, early game, we're just stopping their damage, playing out some upgrades, and then at the end of the turn, if you uh, are in a position to, you've got some damage sides showing, uh, then go for it. Stick some damage out nice and early. As the game progresses into the uh, mid game, again, all, you, all you're really trying to do is keep using your, um, your Night Sisters and your various control pieces to stop that damage hitting your team in every way that you can. Uh, but as you start to get your uh, upgrades in play, um, you will gradually be able to start then dishing out the damage uh, very nicely from from mid game onwards you know you're probably going to have a lightsaber in or a mind probe um or you're uh, just going to be rolling the damage on these girls i often leave these till um quite late to to go uh often start with kylo build a bit of pressure with that mind probe on him or perhaps a lightsaber on him um if you've got an immobilizer on one of the night sisters that can be a good early play as well just to get that immobilized dice out there when it gets to the end game you really are super frustrating um, because all the time you're still you know this makes no difference running out of cards whatever you don't care you are still able to do this ability and stop them from getting their damage to hit the table and you're just able to then set up for the big kill with a no mercy or the power of the force uh, and um and it's uh, and it's good night for them. Final word, just on this battlefield. Uh, this is possibly a little chancy. This is definitely a card that you could perhaps swap for something a bit less dangerous. Um, Echo base comes to mind. Gain one shield. Uh, the reason that I have have got this in here um, is that there there seems to be uh, sometimes when actually. We get a special out on Kylo, we get a special out on the Mind Pro, a special on Sith Holocrons, we get all, all those kind of things. And in terms of, um, of, of timing, actually it can really help us to take this, maybe resolve that Mind Probe, um, and then end up next turn, of course, being able to go first again with that Mind Probe. Late game, it becomes um, quite a, a powerful early play. There's also quite a few times in this deck that you'll be passing you know, if your opponent doesn't really have much out on the table, you know, they've got a focus and a couple of resources rolled, they're not threatening you, uh, you can just stall, you can say pass. Um, and there will be times, of course, when um, they'll pass back, but most of the time uh, you're just able to let them do what they do until they start to look like they're threatening, and then you swing in with immobilizers, force chokes, and rerolls. Anyway, so uh, this deck has been absolutely able to uh, sort out Han a lot of the time uh, it's been able to sort out Vader uh, and, and a couple of occasions now um, a, I've played Java Vader control with it and it's um, it's done very well and it's sort of wiped the floor with Akbar Trooper um, against um, against sort of Balotic uh, Jabba control aggro sort of thing. Um, it's it's been it's been super strong. Um, anyway, 
I'd love thoughts, opinions, feedback on it, uh, cards that you think should be out, cards that you think should be in, uh, what your experiences are um, with it. Uh, I'll post the, the deck list. Um, it's up on Star Wars Destiny uh, DB. Um, and uh, yeah, get playing and enjoying winning, as I hope you do. Uh, cheers, guys. Um, look forward to the next one.